G'day everyone, this is Ozzy Okdok, and thank you for visiting my channel, What's Okdok? I'm a doctor from Australia, and I specialize in the field known as occupational medicine. In this video, I'll be talking about chemical hazards, which is another important type of hazard in the workplace. A hazardous chemical can be a solid, liquid, or gas. It can be a pure substance consisting of one ingredient or a mixture of substances. There are various properties which make them hazardous, namely flammable properties, physical properties, and their ability to undergo chemical reactions. For flammable properties, chemical substances generally act as a source of fuel in the creation of a fire, either as a flammable solid, liquid, or gas. But they can also require other elements of the fire triangle, namely a source of oxygen, as well as an ignition source. For physical properties, this relates to the physical state of a substance and the changes it can undergo. For physical states, the form of the chemical substance, whether it's solid, liquid or gas, can influence its behavior and present varying risks. For example, for solids, particle size can be a major factor. Smaller particle sizes have a greater surface to mass ratio and can pose a greater risk. Explosions can also occur if combustible dust comes into contact with an ignition source. Liquids differ from solids as it can spread quickly if spilled. If it's corrosive, it can lead to damage and leaks to the containment equipment leading to increased risk of exposure. Gas can spread the quickest out of all the forms and can be a source of fuel. Asphyxiation, which is the state of being deprived of oxygen leading to suffocation, can be a significant risk with gases. This can be either by displacing oxygen in the air, consuming oxygen through a chemical reaction, or inhaling into the lungs, affecting the ability of the body to use oxygen. Temperature. Changes in temperature can greatly affect a chemical's properties particularly widening the range at which a chemical can burn in the air by increasing the upper and lowering the lower flammable limits of a substance. It can also increase the pressure by increasing a liquid's vapor pressure, which is the pressure caused as a result of evaporation of liquids in a closed container. Pressure. Chemicals at pressure are usually at a higher risk of loss of containment and instability particularly if they are held in confinement, such as a tank or pipe. Some substances have the ability to undergo certain chemical reactions. These substances can be chemical oxidizers, and they can react violently and unexpectedly when in contact with other chemicals, such as organic material, hydrocarbon solvents, and carbon-based chemicals. Oxygen can also be produced as a result of their chemical reactions and be a source of oxygen. Chemicals can also undergo exothermic reactions which give off heat and can act as a source of ignition. The health effects of a chemical exposure can be varied and depends on a number of factors including the route of exposure, the chemical properties of the substance, the extent and frequency of the exposure, as well as the nature of the work itself. The particular route of exposure can have varying effects on the body, and common routes include inhalation, exposure of the lungs can lead to acute effects such as irritation and burning of the respiratory tract, for example, contact with sodium hydroxide. It can also lead to chronic health effects, for example, development of occupational asthma as a result of exposure to isocyanates, cancer with the exposure of radon gas, and chronic inflammation of the lungs as a result of prolonged and repeated exposure to crystalline silica leading to silicosis. Physical contact. This can result in acute effects such as corrosive damage to skin or the eye or irritant contact dermatitis on the skin. It can also lead to chronic effects such as allergic contact dermatitis. Ingestion. 
Acute effects such as irritation or burning of the digestive tract can occur through accidental ingestion, producing symptoms such as nausea and vomiting. Chronic effects can also occur if it is absorbed by the body. Some chemicals can have autotoxic, affecting hearing, neurological, or carcinogenic effects. Chemical properties. The properties of a chemical can affect its health effects. A substance which would not normally have any adverse health effects as a solid may have different effects as a liquid which can be absorbed through the skin. As fine dust particles or fumes, a chemical can also be inhaled. The extent and frequency of exposure. Health effects can vary depending on the nature of exposure, particularly in regards to whether it was a single or repeated event, the concentration of the substance being exposed to, as well as the duration of exposure. The occupational settings could also be a factor. Direct handling of chemicals would obviously generate risk, however people in the vicinity of the work area can also be affected. Whether it occurred in an open or enclosed space. Whether the area contains deposits which can be disturbed leading to generation of airborne particles. As with all other types of occupational hazards, in order to manage chemical hazards in the workplace, we must follow the hierarchy of controls. Elimination. Removal of any of the elements of the fire triangle, whether it's fuel, air or ignition source, will eliminate the fire generating. Substitution. This may involve using an alternative which is less volatile, less flammable or less toxic. Using diluted chemicals rather than concentrates. Using chemicals that only have a single rather than multiple hazard profiles. Use products that are in solid form, such as a paste or pellet, rather than dust or powder. Engineering. Implementing of effective barriers is critical in not only preventing a hazardous event from occurring, it is also critical in minimizing the consequences once an event has occurred. In terms of physical barriers, these can be active or passive. Passive barriers are the most reliable and do not require additional actions to operate. This can involve using a closed system when processing chemicals, automating the process as much as possible, isolating operations in one room with restricted access, ensure a suitable ventilation system is used for the specific work involved, physical distancing of workers from hazardous chemicals, isolation of individual chemicals in terms of barrier and distance, ensuring adequate storage and disposal, and storage by walls and doors for fire and explosions. Active barriers work by detecting a hazardous condition and either alerting the operator or initiating an automated process. These can include alarms or trip systems, pressure relief valves, or automated shutdown systems. Administrative controls. Ensure that safe operating policies and procedures are in place. This could involve minimizing the number of workers directly exposed to the chemical, reduce the duration and frequency of work requiring direct handling, ensure safe handling, storage and disposal protocols. Emergency and evacuation response plans to all chemical hazards in the workplace. These include procedures for containing leaks and spills, emergency and safety equipment, for example, extinguishers and fire blankets. The training of staff. This includes safe use, handling and storage, emergency protocols, prohibiting eating and smoking in contaminated areas, and general hygiene. Regular maintenance of equipment. Adequate signage, particularly with warning signs and labeling of containers. Maintaining a register of hazardous chemicals in the workplace and regular health monitoring of workers. In terms of PPE, this can come in a variety of forms, particularly chemical resistant gloves, full face respirators or masks, eye protection, and overalls. 
In summary, this video provided a general overview of chemical hazards in the workplace. We discussed the physical and chemical properties of substances which can cause them to be hazardous. We discussed the various health effects from chemical exposure. And finally, we discussed various ways of managing chemical exposure risk in the workplace. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that I provided you with some valuable information in the area of occupational medicine. I value any feedback, therefore please feel free to leave a comment on any of my videos, as well as a like if you enjoyed it. If you find my content of value, please subscribe and share them with your family and colleagues. Have a good day.